Uh, our speaker today is David Powers, the director of the Petaluma Art Center since 2014. David began his photography in 1974, uh, working as a photojournalist for Time Magazine, Newsweek, and Business Week magazine. He opened his, uh, Franci his San Francisco commercial studio in 1989, focusing on projects involving real people and their stories. He was a recipient for an, uh, a number of awards for the work that he did at that time. David has served as the National Vice President of the Advertising Photographers of America, was a member of the San Francisco Academy of Arts Advisory Board, and a juror of the San Francisco Academy. Petaluma Art Center is celebrating its 10th anniversary. David's presentation today will give us a brief look at the back, what's uh, at the history, and we'll look forward. Please welcome David Power. Thank you, Michael. Uh, and, and especially thank you to Charlie who uh, walked me through the technology involved in uh, making this presentation today. Uh, my name is David Powers. I'm the Vice President of Petaluma Art Center Board. And on behalf of the Art Center and the Board, I would like to thank all of you for inviting us here today to give you an idea about some of the things that we do. In today's remarks, I'd like to give you a brief picture of the history of the Arts Center, an overview of what we do, the changes to, in our situation since we announced staff layoffs on July 1, and what we think our next steps are. <clears throat> Who we are uh, is very simple. Uh, there are some basic facts. We are a California 501c3 registered nonprofit arts organization. It's quite a mouthful. We've had 10 year history here in Petaluma. During that time, we've welcomed over 10,000 visitors through our doors. For nine of those years, we have presented summer arts camp. We have 325 current members. The board of directors has nine members. And we are currently running on an all-volunteer basis. I'm pushing this a little too aggressively. Uh, to back up to some more of the facts, um, we have a 4,500 square foot facility with one large gallery, one small gallery, and one classroom. The mission of the Art Center is to build community through art. And I'd like to take a few minutes to tell you, to show you a few examples of how we do that. Oops, sorry. Uh, briefly, we offer five to seven exhibitions per year on a variety of themes, many of them involving local artists. In conjunction with these exhibitions, we also offer a variety of events, consisting of speakers, artist panels, demonstrations, and performances in various art forms. We also host two event series outside the gallery, the Idea Lounge and the Art Bus. Our third area of programming consists of two educational channels, class visits from Petaluma, for Petaluma school kids to the gallery during exhibitions and our summer arts camp program. I want to point out that the Art Center has established a record of presenting innovative and conceptually well-designed exhibitions, and I'd like to give you a few examples of that uh, to highlight. Our goal has always been to resonate with the community as well as to challenge the vis visually curious. The face of Petaluma is such an example. It was a collaboration between the Pet Petaluma Historical Museum and the Art Center. It was conceived as demonstrating a linkage between the past and the present in our town. The museum presented an exhibit of historical photographs of the town's founders, while five photographers from the Art Center 
spent a year photographing various residents in the town to present its contemporary face. And these are some of the examples, uh, images on the wall here at the opening of that exhibition. Our biennial Youth Shapes the World exhibition <clears throat> works with students and parents to give kids the chance to create an exhibit of art in a full-fledged gallery setting. At the opening, each youth artist is given a name badge with the title artist displayed prominently. It's truly a celebration for both the kids and the parents. And I'd like to also mention that in two days, <clears throat> we will be opening our latest exhibition called The National Parks Project by Mary Fassbinder with guest artist Davis Perkins. <clears throat> Murray Fassbinder's personal journey of three and a half years to create a plein air painting in each of this country's 60 national parks is a remarkable example of artistic vision and commitment. The Art Center is proud to be able to provide this local artist with an opportunity to show work from such a special project. Accompanying this exhibition, by the way, is a very special series of Thursday night events which I have copies of for your information and we can pass those out after the, after the presentation. Outside the gallery through our out of the box series, we present two different programs. Both these programs are less than three years old. The first is the Idea Lounge, <coughs> Excuse me. which pairs two speakers from the community, one from the arts, the other not in the arts, each speaking for 20 minutes on a subject of their choosing, leaving 20 minutes for the audience to ask questions and discuss to discover the linkage between art and life. This thing is a little hyperactive. The second program is called the Art Bus. It brings the uh, program, uh, it allows the art curious people uh, in our community and brings them to places of interest that they not already have been on their arts itineraries. All of these locations provide a glimpse of the unique perspective on one way or another of the Bay Area's rich tapestry of artistic creati creative abilities. So I, this is fine. I, I'd like to just get into a little of the background of the Art Center because I know it's been in the paper and I know that people probably have questions about it. In 2008, the Art Center opened after receiving a $1 million challenge gift from a local angel in 2006. And then raised $500,000 to meet that challenge in 2007. It began to establish a reputation for exciting and innovative exhibitions, but it also consistently ran at a deficit. In 2014, uh, the, the Art Center hired a new H, uh, executive director and recruited a new board, which Michael and I were both members of. The board began to address the revenue shortfall by increasing membership and by cultivating and stewarding donors and growing that population. And in 2017, we held our first successful gala fundraiser. Despite our best efforts, in June of 2018, we were unable to raise enough, fast enough, and we were forced to lay off staff. On July 1, we began a new chapter as an all-volunteer organization. Since then, through sheer determination of these volunteers, the ship has gradually righted and revenue is increasing slightly each month. At that town hall meeting on July 1, July 10 rather, our, our promise, our first promise to our members and our stakeholders was to fulfill all the programming that was on the books, despite the fact that we had no staff. We did this and we did more. Here's a summary of a few of the highlights. In education, we completed the summer arts camp. We continued our BTS program. We added adult workshops, exhibitions, 
we added two pop-up exhibitions of two weeks long each and then continued with our already program uh, scheduled, previously scheduled exhibitions, the last of which just closed last week. It was our member show. In events, we continued and completed the Idea Lounge. We took 45 people to the Oliver Ranch on the art bus. We, have, we held three small fundraisers. We recruited three new board members and we completed a year-end campaign. So what's next? Despite the fact we've reached, uh, despite the fact that we're all volunteer, we feel that we've now reached a flexion point. We have put in place a number of programs for the com coming quarter, starting with the opening of the National Parks Project this Saturday evening. And our goal is to push forward with continued meaningful programming that will increase our audience and our donor base to the point where we can rehire staff and begin to further and bring further focus to our activities. Some of these projects are two additional exhibitions through the summer, a small music series, all of which will be mini fundraisers, new adult workshops on the weekends. We are beginning to plan for summer art camp, and VTS will resume as soon as the National Parks exhibit opens. Also, what's next? In, on the inside, the Art Center is going through a transition. In order to, to make all of this come together, we need to address the need for a, a, a operational adjustment. Since September, a special task force of board members and community members has been examining ways to do this. It is developing a framework for fiscal stability, for the future, which will be presented to the board in the coming month. The board will hold strategic planning sessions to determine the final implementation of these recommendations. And later in the spring, we'll hold another town hall meeting to report out to the community and to our members. We're also taking some initial steps on planning a fundraiser in the fall. So as we look forward, one of the key areas of the for the future of the Art Center lies in education. We feel that this area presents significant opportunities in the future for the Center to build on what is already in place. Almost any artist will tell you that sometime during their school career, something clicked. It could have been attending a play, painting a mural, playing a musical instrument, writing a poem, Whatever it was, at some point, the creative process began and the door opened. That's for kids who became artists. But what about the kids that choose to go into business or work in manufacturing or gravitate to banking and finance? There's great evidence that not only does art ignite creativity and innovation when introduced as part of the school curriculum, there are numerous anecdotal reports that the arts give kids a broader understanding of the world they live in. Companies and organizations that want to stay globally competitive realize that they need employees who are multidisciplinary, creative thinkers, and who are able to collaborate with other team members. These are the same qualities that are at the heart of staging a play and playing in a jazz quartet. When kids learn that a blank sheet of paper is an invitation to explore the world of the imagination, their perceptions about multiplicity, ambiguity, and collaboration expand. Perhaps the mantra of every director of corporate research would best be to echo the observation of Pablo Picasso. Every child is an artist. The problem is staying an artist when we get older. With all this background about what it is about arts education that's so special, I'd like to take a minute to talk or two to talk about what we're doing in arts education, especially about a special program that we started two years ago. 
The doorway to art, in many ways, is created by the process of visual thinking strategies, or VTS, which is an awkward title for a program that in itself is fundamentally intuitive. VTS teaches through querying rather than through exposition. Kids are asked three questions, and they learn that they can trust their answers simply because there are no wrong answers when the answers of each member are given equal weight and credibility. This is a process that builds collaboration because there is a, mul because there is a multiplicity of answer and each answer has validity that can be shared. So if, e if VTS is the doorway, then the summer arts camp is the room the kids enter when they begin to experience what hands-on arts projects can mean to them. Last year's summer arts camp offered courses in ceramics, jewelry, audio theater, storytelling, graffiti camp for girls, anime, Pokemon, chalk writing, chalk, chalk painting, cartooning, pastels, and charcoal. Since its beginning, the Art Center has held over 120 of these classes, reaching approximately 1,000 students. Last year, we had 197 kids registered for classes, the most ever in 22 classes. The camp is composed of nine one-week sessions, which have a morning and an afternoon session, four days a week. The average cost per week is $125. So how does this all fit together? Very simply, we estimate that it will cost the Art Center about eight to ten thousand dollars to coordinate, manage, promote, and award limited scholarships for this summer arts camp session. As an organization, you can help us provide kids in this community with an arts education experience that they don't normally experience during their school year. The arts creative muscle is just as important as the running fast muscle. One moves in physical space, the other expands in internal space. Both are important. You can see here how you can envision how your dollars would be put to work. All of the web material, postcards, and other promotion that the Art Center produces around the summer arts camp will carry with it an acknowledgement of your support. We are certainly open to other creative arrangements to help get the word out about how any support that, the, that Rotary can provide us. We want you to consider very seriously what your support will mean for kids' experience of art this summer. So in summary, this afternoon we've looked briefly at what the tradition of the Art Center has established for itself in its pursuit of memorable and engaging visual exhibitions. We've highlighted some of the many steps that we've been taken, that we have taken to maintain our programming to, and improve our business model since last July 1st. We've shown that PEAC, the Art Center, can make a difference in Petaluma, both for current art lovers and for our kids, who are not only future art lovers, but they are also our future problem solvers. And finally, we've introduced you to a way that you can help the Art Center continue to do more of the same. Finally, I'd like to invite all of you to the Art Center. A great opportunity is Saturday at the opening of the National Parks exhibition, but you don't have to attend that if you're afraid of crowds. I'm sure it's going to be a large group. The Art Center is open Wednesday through Sunday from 11 to 5. If you, kept, if you visit and you fall in love, become a member. And if, if, that is, if that's uh, something that interests you, step farther and become a volunteer. We're looking for board members. If you love art and you want to help this uh, nonprofit survive and thrive here in the community, we certainly invite your interest. Okay, so that's it.
So I'm happy to answer any questions, and I want to thank you all very much for your attention and again for the invitation. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, the uh, the the rough plan at the art center is to balance the needs of the local artist community, which is unique here in southern in the southern part of the county, with group shows from artists of the region. So we'll be uh, having uh, in the middle of the year middle of this year we'll be having what we call a regional jury show which is an invitational show to artists within a region uh, submitting art on a, on a given topic and that topic is a single word wall take it however you want it not necessarily political it can be interior it can be psychological spiritual it can be a number of different things and it will be very interesting to see what the artist community Response. No, we don't have anything like that planned. Uh, that was an unusual uh, moment for the art center. It came through a couple of connections for people who are connected to the art center and who are connected to San Francisco art. Um, we'd like to do that. The uh, unfortunate part of that equation, which was an extremely popular show, was that the cost was thirty thousand yeah. dollars, and uh, because it's a rental show, it's all it comes in a package, and you hang it on the wall. And the shows that we do with local artists are much more organic; they come together, and then we are, we curate them ourselves. Yes, sir. I know the art center. Well, the, the art center's position on the bathtubs is at arm's length. The art center is firmly behind the concept of public art in Petaluma. And because of who we are as an organization, we don't make statements about specific artists. Well, that's a... Uh, yeah. Art is in the eye of the beholder. <laughs> so, is there any, anything? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, what? Uh, the one percent or so much. Yes. Does that go to you guys or? No, no. no. The, the relationship between the Public Art Committee and the Art Center is uh, very, it's, um, how do I say, we are required by the city to nominate one representative from the Art Center each term. Um, we have, so there is a person on the Public Art Committee that is nominated by the Art Center. The other Five members of the committee are are uh, selected at large and appointed by the council. And I think that I'm correct in saying that s half of those are to be professional artists and others are to be members of the community, not necessarily artists. And then there is a liaison also on the public art committee that comes from the Parks and Rec Department. So there are seven people, I think I'm correct in that, on the committee. So we have one member we get a report maybe twice a year on what's going on. We do not instruct or influence what the member that we appoint or that we recommend to the council, what their position on any piece of art is. They're there to provide their experience and their expertise. Well, David, I have a question. If there's no others, um, tell us about STEM to STEAM. STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Sounds all left brain, my kind of stuff. But you know, what about the right brain, the creative side, the arts? Like, do anything with the schools there, or how is that going? I love the idea of the 
visual thinking strategy. And we used to have all this common core stuff that was going on, and we realized it kind of beat the creativity out of people. And uh, yet, you, you get these kind of devices, like um, iPhone or whatever, um, Jenny Ives, who has like, been a big part of all the design factors. So I think you have one person, um, in fact, uh, Lisa Demetrius and others, that are really into the design. Tell us what's going on on the right brain side of stuff. Well, I, I <laughs> as far as uh, I think it's kind of hard to answer that question. I think the, 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 the thrust of the art center is to provide kids with an opportunity to add the letter A to the term STEM, uh -huh. to create the word STEAM. Uh -huh. And if you look at what we do with visual thinking strategies, that's one attempt that we make to open kids up to something that they don't get in school, because we assume that in school they're getting all your mathematics, engineering, technology, science. Uh, so we're there sort of in a sense of being adding to, we're an additive process. Uh, I don't think there's any way at the moment that the Art Center is going to delve into providing scientific courses. Um, the closest we would come would be a maker's <laughs> workshop, which is a brilliant idea. Is this one of your summer programs? I know you've had uh, summer programs. It's up, it's up for grabs at the moment. We have okay. to look for teachers. Mm -hmm. For people that don't know what Makers is, Makers is a process by which kids sit around a table, groups of three to six. Uh, they're given certain materials, like paper clips, clothespins, cardboard, whatever, and told to make a catapult out of this and they collaborate together and come up with a version of that. So it's a, it's a way to work with stuff, physical stuff, use spatial relations, use collaboration, and come up with a team solution. It's pretty fascinating. I don't think I did it justice in my description. No, but you're pretty well linked with the schools. You know, youth is one of our avenues of service, and I think that's probably a pretty big part of who you try to touch also. Well, I think that as far as the schools go, our best inroads so far have been through the BTS program. We have presented the idea of visual thinking strategies to every principal in Petaluma. All the elementary school principals and all of the secondary school principals. Uh, Kim Draper at the Board of Education, who's the director of curriculum, works with us on our education committee and helps facilitate some of the interface between the schools and the art center. Uh, we are also very encourage, encouraging of teachers learning themselves to become trained, trained in visual thinking strategies because it works not only for art, it works for problem solving in the broader, in the broader perspective of the classroom. One question in the back, shall we? It's really a comment. I, I don't know if you're aware, but Jack Ma, who's the co-founder and executive chairman of Alibaba. Can you hear me? Can we get a microphone? <laughs> there we go. This is really just a comment. I don't know if you're aware of Jack Ma. He's the co-founder and executive chairman of Alibaba, which is kind of Amazon for the other side of the globe. But he recently uh, made comments about uh, art, the arts in school, and he was saying, really, for the future, what you should be doing is having your kids educated in arts and the more subjective uh, disciplines because the science, the technology, the engineering, robots are going to be doing that. <laughs> so uh, he was actually very much promoting that and I just, I didn't know if you were aware of that. I, well, I, I wasn't aware of the comment that I couldn't uh, support the, strong, the sentiment more strongly. Yeah, I think he's, um, it was a great... Uh, I have heard more than once from people in business that Kids who come out of school who only have a STEM approach are freaked by the idea of having to deal with a problem that could have two answers. Um, it really does teach you to kind of hold two different things at once and figure out how to blend them, choose them, select them, work with them. It's not a check-the-box approach. It's a slower, it's a slower learn rate uh, for liberal arts and visual arts themselves. And it's not something that is quantifiable, except that in the long term, as people suggest uh, regarding practice in business, 
having a liberal arts or a visual arts background does help when blended with other STEAM, STEM subjects, does help with problem solving and makes for good team work. Well, okay, let's give David a big round of applause. I have a speaker for the speaker here from the Pedal Monroe Group for the Pedal Mark Center. And if any of you are interested in supporting youth through the arts, please see David. Thanks again for coming. Thank you.